I love how Matthew's gospel opens, right? Because Matthew's gospel opens by taking that whole story and saying, guess what? The fulfillment of this exile is about to be um, to be ended and new exodus is beginning. So mm. Matthew starts with the genealogy of Jesus, which most people think is super boring, but it's actually very interesting, <laughs> surprise, because Matthew, Matthew um, deliberately breaks it up into three groups of 14 generations, mm. somewhat artificial. Um, he's leaving some things out and stuff like that to get, because he wants the number 14 in all three. Mm. And what's, I won't go into all that, but what's fascinating is these three sections are explicitly built around um, the David, the Davidic um, kingship. So it starts with Abraham, the one who got the promises. And then the first section ends with the rise of David, the king. And then, um, and well, actually, I mean, he makes this explicit in verse 17. The generations from Abraham to David, 14. So that's the first section. And then David to the exile, the deportation to Babylon, 14. So the David to the loss of the Davidic kingship and the Okay, the people going into exile. And then the next three is the deportation to Babylon, the exile to the Messiah, 14. So just by structuring it that way, mm. you're meant to say, ah, here comes the new David to bring back mm. the people from exile. And then Jesus' birth narrative is basically a recapitulation of, well, the first four chapters are a recapitulation of the exile and exodus story. So Jesus is born mm. um, and Herod functions in this in the way the story is told as a pharaoh figure, mm. right? Who um, decrees the, the the killing of the baby boys. Whoa. Okay. I, okay. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever thought yeah. of that. Oh, it's, uh, it's huge. That's, that's, that makes so much sense. And though. then Jesus gets sent to Egypt, right. right? And then he comes back from Egypt. Yeah. Now we're starting. Now he's like functioning as Israel, right? He comes back from Egypt, um, and then the next thing in the story basically, is he ends up in the Jordan River, right? Yeah, wow. Right? Yeah. Re mm -hmm. Fulfilling the story of Israel. And then after that, he's in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted, which is his recapitulation of Israel's being tempted in the desert for 40 years, mm -hmm. right? But he succeeds where they fail. And then the next thing is the Sermon on the Mount where he goes up to a mountain and gives his new sort of what a Torah written on the heart would look like, right? So it's the story of Israel of exile and return, and then Matthew's gospel ends with Jesus celebrating a Passover feast, right? Um, because what he's doing is he's speaking of the death he's about to die in terms of um, exile and exodus. So he's, mm. he's situating his death in light of the new exodus because Passover is embedded in the, new, in the, in the exodus. And then he dies. He dies really, as, uh, as Hebrews will say, outside the camp bearing our sins. He dies as somebody who's cursed with mm. the curses of the covenant outside of the city, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the death of a, a cursed person, basically taking the scapegoat imagery of the mm. Old Testament, um, cutting off from the people, exile, right? Away from God, banished from the people, banished from God's presence, banished from God's land. And, and the New Testament set, sees in that Jesus taking the exile of his people so that his people can take his, um, his blessings and, and life. Mm. That is something. Yeah. And you're using this all, this is just an example. Yeah, this is one, this is one example. We could do this all day with all sorts of others. All kinds yeah. of story themes. Well, and this whole, yeah, wow, the concept of the, of the storyline in, in, in scripture. Like, yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to think about that because... I can, I can, I'm very much seeing how this could be very applicable yeah. in a lot of different ways, you know, just in, in general, like how we read, yeah. oh, uh, how time. we read stuff, oh, yeah. you know, it's oh, not, yeah. I'm not, you're not reading a chapter in isolation, you know, you're no. not, not reading a book even in no. isolation because these things connect all across. And the, I think that's the, thread, the key. You know? That's one of the key things is when you start realizing there's connections everywhere, mm. you start looking for them mm. and then you see them. That's kind of the one big thing that, that we, that people just, yeah, it's not a quick, you can't just be like, how do I know everything I need to know about this? It's more like you need yeah, to just yeah. change your perspective mm. on what you expect from the text. Hmm. And once you see, once you realize, oh, this is how this, the Bible works, mm -hmm. then you see it everywhere and you can't unsee it. 